Hello and welcome to Economic Forum. My name is Tawanda Gudlanga. Uh, this week our focus is on uh, public procurement and in the studio we have invited uh, Mr. Nyasha Chizu, the Chief Executive Officer of the Procurement Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe Pras. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This discussion is very, very important as we are facing the wrath of uh, COVID-19 and public procurement certainly becomes one of the key issues that we should focus on given its importance, particularly um, where we are looking at trying to fight uh, this uh, pandemic at a timeline which we are not too sure when it's going to end. I will take you back a bit. You did, uh, as a PRAS, uh, come up with a framework uh, that would be suited with the uh, current pandemic. Can you explain more on that? What I would want to highlight is that it is not like PRAS came with a framework, but PRAS only directed procuring entities to provisions of the Act to deal with the situation. You will find that our Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act was designed for all environments, including such type of environment where we have got COVID, which is a pandemic which needs to be dealt with with speed and also taking into account the requirements of public procurement that the procurement processes need to be transparent, they need to be competitive, they need to be fair, and economic. So what we simply did with secular number one of 2020, after liaising with Minister of Finance as to how we are going to deal with this and also with the Minister of Health, we then agreed with the Minister of Health in terms of our act, which allows that we can have a common elite procurement agent for common procurement. So in this case, we are talking of COVID-19, which require the same things for, for all the entities that are responsible for fighting it, whether you are through Minister of Health or you are through Minister of Local Government, where we are talking of our local authorities. And all other agencies, we are talking of, we vote our police who are there to control the movement, we vote the army, we have got border control, we have got Zimra, all these institutions are there to manage the activities of the country as much as they are also managing the issues of COVID. So we came up with a, a reminder of what was supposed to be done. What I would just want to mention, Tawanda, is that with COVID-19, it is a pandemic which we know the processes that are needed to manage it. It is a pandemic which we know the equipment that is needed. It is a pandemic which we know the accessories and the medicines that are required. So we are not expecting a mafia procurement. We are not expecting people to be making money because of the pandemic fleecing government, overpricing uh, goods and uh, services. So what we have highlighted to the procuring entity is, is that as they are managing the uh, pandemic, one of the things is to spruce up their facilities for isolation centers, testing centers, uh, treatment centers. Yes, those could be treated as agent uh, procurements where we are talking of be it construction and the like. So the law in that regard would allow for direct procurement because of the time that is there. And when we say direct procurement, we are not simply saying you are handpicking a, a supplier, you are handpicking your friend. We are saying follow a process which allows a due diligence process to establish the quantum of the works that are needed the value of the works, the quality assurance mechanisms that you are going to put so that at the end of the day you don't fleece government. Then on the second part, where we are talking of the other accessories required, the sanitizers, the protective clothing, what we know is what is needed. What we don't know is how much is needed. So we 
said to Minister of Health, go for framework arrangements where you are going to establish the suppliers and the type of uh, protective clothing, uh, pharmaceuticals or uh, sanitizers that are required for this process, be it equipment, go to the market, identify the suppliers, set up framework arrangements, framework contracts, so that when now there is need, you are not going to the market running not knowing how much you are supposed to be paying. We are supposed to be scratching our heads as to uh, the, if the volume has increased, where are we going to get the additional funds? But, but uh, maybe for the benefit of the viewer, when we talk of public procurement, we're talking about public funds. We're basically talking about money that belongs to Zimbabweans. And in this pandemic, as you say, um, uh, ethics such as transparency, competitiveness, fairness, how do they come in when we are talking about a global uh, uh, pandemic, uh, Mr. Chizu, which needs urgent address? And you are saying that um, this pandemic uh, gives time to plan, to come up with uh, a, a procurement which is stipulated by the law and not which is uh, maverick, as you put it. You will find that we are using World Health Organization guidelines as to what is needed. So in terms of the process of quantification, part of that process has already been done for us. In terms of what are the equipment, what are the uh, accessories, what type of protective clothing is required, that is already in place. So we would not expect someone just to start thinking from off when he said that this is the type of protective clothing. It is already known. So what was not yet known actually is who are the suppliers who can give us. And that process was undertaken. Minister of Health flighted tenders which closed on a 48 hour period. So we've got an initial supplier base right now. But we are not saying this is the end. Because when that thing happened, you know, it was the beginning of the lockdown. We know that some companies would have been closed. So we are expecting that the Minister of Health will go back to the market to beef up the supplier base on the same process. So the issues of transparency by just going to the market inviting is achieved. But your assessment, uh, Mr. Chizu, of the tender, tendering process, uh, the bidding, the, the tendering, uh, would you say it is within uh, the framework which is acceptable to price? So far, what has been presented by the Minister of Health, it is within the framework that has been presented. We are happy that, as I speak today, deliveries have already started for protective clothing and other items that they have already concluded. So with me, so far, from a process perspective, I think they are in line. But if there are other things, those things can be reviewed by our regular monitoring and evaluations that we do. We will then look at when you are doing your specifications, when you following the guidelines that were provided by the World Health Organization, when you are presenting your terms and conditions, whether the terms and conditions that are suitable for the environment, those are the things that we would just be looking at. But are there uh, effective monitoring mechanisms? We've seen videos of uh, masks being washed and ironed and resupplied. Is that the case in Zimbabwe? Join us after the break. Welcome back. This is Economic Forum and we are focusing on a public procurement in the COVID era. And with us is Mr. Nyasha Chizu, the Chief Executive Officer of PRIZE. Now, Mr. Chizu, um, WHO guidelines seem to be the, the, the benchmark of uh, procurement. But let's look at um, the, the, the structure of suppliers. Because the argument that seems to come is that Zimbabwe's industrial base has been low, and as such, we're going to be relying on, on imports, as it were. Um, what is the status with regards to uh, some of our suppliers? 
What I would say is there was a directive from cabinet to ensure that there is local uh, supply of some of these products. You look at issues like sanitizers, the universities have been mandated to produce these sanitizers. And we have been producing sanitizers locally before. So what I would say is, yes, there are some products that we are not going to avoid importing, but there are products that we are expecting that we would only get them from the local market. Issues like even the, the, the masks, I've seen the universities have already started those processes. So you find, yes, there is an opportunity for boosting our local industry with this pandemic. But there are things that definitely we would expect uh, uh, our procuring entities to be importing because we don't manufacture them locally. But let's look at um, what government did, um, sort of supporting uh, in uh, universities to come up with sanitizers and the like. Uh, some analysts believe that uh, probably they are actually elbowing out uh, other players in the market where now uh, universities seem to get preferential treatment and as such that is more or less a violation of uh, public procurement. What would be your comment? It's not like elbowing out. What we are looking at, if you recall when the requirement for sanitizers came up, those who had sanitizers then started um, increasing the prices even 10 times. So when universities brought in their, their products, they managed to level the pricing. So it's not like elbowing out. Why do I say so? When we talk of COVID, no, you didn't need a sanitizer for the whole of your life. But because of COVID, you might need to sanitize your hands four or five times a day. So the demand for sanitizer if we had not engaged universities as directed by cabinet, it was going to be overwhelming to the already existing. So I would say it's not really a big um, a challenge to our um, industry because the market is very big. We are talking of sanitizers that are required at places where they were never required. Which poses another threat, Mr. Chizu, because now because of the huge demand of uh, protective wear, uh, sanitizers, and even uh, masks, you then find that um, the issue of quality comes into play. Because now the belief is that people are just mass producing and bringing things on the market which are not necessarily uh, quality products. Is there any mechanism to actually uh, then check uh, if the products are within the, uh, the, 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 the expected uh, standard. When it comes to the issues of standards, we are expecting that our Standards Association of Zimbabwe would step in to ensure that they provide the minimum standards for these items. You will find with our sanitizers, some of the sanitizers that are being produced, you know, even the smell that they are producing, it's, it's, it's horrible to the extent that uh, one would not want to use a sanitizer. So I think these are things that we are expecting that the Standards Association of Zimbabwe would come in to uh, regulate that element of what is the minimum when you talk of uh, the products that are... But is public procurement uh, uh, regulatory authority itself? Uh, should we say you have the teeth to actually deal with uh, uh, those, those, those unscrupulous uh, suppliers, because uh, expectations were that at least we would hear one or two that would have been caught. Or you are telling me that um, they all have been uh, compliant and we are indeed receiving standard products so far. With that report, we are going to be monitoring it from the receivers of the products. Because as uh, the agencies of government who are managing COVID receive the products, they have the responsibility of inspecting. So if there is an issue of someone trying to bring in a substandard product, then we are expecting to be receiving reports so that we do a process of debarment 
when someone is giving someone a substandard product. It's very interesting you talk about having to wait for reports because the expectation is that as a regulator authority, you would probably on the ground to do probably spot checks to avoid issues such as uh, collusion uh, that may happen between the procuring entities themselves because they would know that somehow they would have bought substandard products and generally they would be accepted, affecting the very citizens who are supposed to be protected, who are actually the owners of the money that is being used to, 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 to procure. As the Procurement Regulatory Authority, we are incapacitated in terms of uh, assessing quality. That is not our mandate. Our mandate is to ensure a process is complied with. So far, we are happy that the process is being complied with. To the extent that if there are issues to do with quality, the process allows for those agencies that are responsible for managing issues of quality to come in and use the, our process where we are saying when one goes to tender, you go to tender with a specification. So that specification, these agencies like the Standards Association can now verify that this specification is wrong and the appropriate measures can be taken. Let's talk about flouting uh, of uh, public procurement uh, regulations. We know uh, now the famous level 14 for those that flout uh, telecommunication uh, regulations. What are some of the punitive measures that are in place? We already have level 14 in our regulations. Failure to follow the proper tender procedure is level 14. Uh, the issues that we have brought in where you are saying someone has received a product which is substandard. According to our act, you would have violated the terms and conditions of the tender where you are now receiving products that are outside. It's another level 14. We'll talk more about level 14 and the punitive measures that can be put for those that flout public procurement regulations. Join us in the third and final segment. Welcome back. This is Economic Forum and our focus is on public procurement and we have Mr. Nyasa Chizu from Praz. Now you're talking about uh, the, 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 the levels of, of fines and possible uh, prosecution. But what has been the success rate uh, of, of Praz when it comes to uh, you know, uh, dealing with those that would have flouted the rules? I would say there are quite a number of cases in public procurement that are in the courts. And I would say, so far, the, the courts processes are, are very long, but the level of success, I feel, is very high. Because the cases that have gone, they've been properly investigated, most of them properly investigated, and would have given a statement of procedure. So we go in as expert witnesses uh, advising uh, the courts as to the processes that were supposed to have been followed and what was done by the uh, accused and what are the implications in terms of the law. So far we have been going around the country, we have been inundated with these uh, matters. So what I would say is, yes, the level of awareness that flouting procurement processes is criminal is now out there. Now let's talk about the recent development of the national airliner carrying cargo uh, weighing about 30 tons uh, coming from, from, from China. Um, was this a part of uh, the, 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 the tendering process? Was it a supplier who brought in? Can you explain more on this particular cargo that came through? So far, from my understanding of the reading, it is suppliers that are coming in. What we are not yet sure of is, are these things going to be donated to government or we are saying these things are now available for sale to government. If they are going to be donated to government, then they, they would follow the processes that are available in the Public Finance Management Act. But when it is that they are going to be sold to government, 
then they are going to follow public procurement and disposal of public assets act. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about common use items. Uh, you've, you're always on record uh, insisting that public entities need to ensure that they galvanize their, their public procurement uh, of the common use items. Uh, how successful has this been? Initially, it was not being understood. But with the coming of the devolution, I have actually seen now local authorities realizing that with the devolution funds, they are all going to the market for equipment to do roads, to do their maintenance. So they've now gone to the Minister of Local Government to say, can you lead us in this procurement of common use items? So we can actually see that it is now being adopted. Uh, at the first time instance, we were like trying to push in the use of common use items and you know pushing in when someone is not realizing the benefit you are always bound to get some resistance but now but isn't the resistance more criminally inclined because with uh, procurement of common use items the, the expectation is that there would be economies of scale and as such it actually makes the prices more competitive and economic certainly that is uh, the issue Resistance comes from two uh, uh, scenarios. One, it could be a lack of knowledge. The other, it could be criminal intentions, that if you are going to pull our requirements, then I will not have the opportunity to uh, make advantage out of any process. So, like I say, if the powers that be realize that there is benefit from pulling resources would see the, in a short space of time institutions now uh, coming together to say on our stationary items at a district level these are our requirements identify within their district who is supposed to lead the procurement process the same with office provisions the same with everything that is common we are expecting that very sh in a short space of time this will be happening. And I'm happy that we are now at a stage of uh, uh, issuing regulations for compliance, monitoring and evaluation, and another set of regulations for uh, professionalization. They have now been cleared in terms of the act by the vice president responsible for the act, uh, General Honorable General Chuenga. So we are now expecting the attorney general now to issue those regulations. Once those regulations are issued, I would want to assure you that it is going to change the level in terms of perception, the terms, the level of effectiveness that you are going to get from public procurement. As a procurement expert yourself, obviously COVID-19 has been a game changer, business-wise and uh, systems-wise. From a procurement perspective, what do you see as the major game changer? What I've seen as a major game changer with our law is the manner in which this pandemic has been dealt with. It has been dealt with in an orderly manner. Everything has been planned in terms of what is the programming process and the issues of identifying the isolation centers, the issues of identifying treatment centers, all this, I feel that this pandemic has been a game changer in the health sector to an extent that we are going to have an improved health sector after this COVID-19. Thank you so much for finding time to come to the studio. Thank you. My guest was uh, Mr. Nyasha Chizu, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, PRAS, where we were focusing on public procurement in the COVID-19 uh, era. And of course, remember to stay safe, stay at home, and always wash your hands. My name is Tawanda Gutlanga. Do join us again next time. Until then, it's pleasant viewing.